Hey guys. Hey, it says we're live and I know it's recording. So we're going to try this again. I'm just going to break it down to just the outline in the verse. I mean, the, you know, whatever the reading. Because it, keep, it kept crashing on me the other day and I don't know why. So um, let's just do the outline and everything on 13 and we'll read it. And then the 14 and we'll read it. And then we'll do uh, Mark 10. I'm sorry, Luke 10 verses 1 through 24. Father God, I ask that you bless your word. Help us to understand what we're reading. I pray that you help us to grow in our knowledge, our wisdom, and our discernment. I ask that it speak to our hearts and to grow within us. Help us to digest or to eat these words so that we can be the light, on the, you know, the light and salt of the earth as Jesus commanded us so that we can reach folks that hasn't heard the good news while there's still good time. While there's still time. But Father, we ask you bless the reading and the hearing everyone. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I'm a little dingy today because I don't know why. But anyway. Okay, so in the outline for chapter 13, uh, we already did this, but I'm going to do it again anyway. Uh, the verses 1 through 7. The Philistines scared the Israelites with a massive army. When Saul had reigned in Israel several years ago, his son Jonathan defeated the Philistine garrison at Geba. This infuriated the Philistines, and they brought 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and troops. No. All the way down. That's a constant battle to keep the adult cats out of here from eating the baby food. Oh, let's see. Let's see this. Let's see this. Let's see. Yeah, sorry. Uh, 6,000 horsemen and troops to fight against Israel, right here. The Philistines camped at Michmash. 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 Saul gathered the fighting men of Israel at Gilgal, but they were terrified of their enemies. The people of Israel hid in caves, holes, rocky areas, tombs, cisterns, and some even crossed the Jordan River to try to avoid the Philistines. Verses 8 through 18, Saul's sinful sacrifice. Samuel told Saul he would meet him in Gilgal within seven days to offer a sacrifice and ask for God's help. At the end of the seven days, there was no sign of Samuel. Now keep in mind, the day hadn't even ended yet. It wasn't the end of the, it hadn't started the eighth day yet. Anyway, there was no sign of Samuel, so Saul decided to take things into his own hands and offer the sacrifice himself. Saul was a king. He was not a prophet. He was not a priest. As soon as Saul had offered the burnt offering, Samuel arrived. Samuel was angry with him because he was not authorized to offer sacrifices. He was the king of Israel, but not the priest of Israel. Saul tried to make excuses, but Samuel wasn't interested. Saul was told he would be punished because of his disobedience. In coming generations, the kingdom of Israel would not be ruled by his children. The throne would be given to another family. Samuel left Gilgal, and Saul moved his men to Geba. The Philistines sent out three raiding parties into Israelite territory. And then 19 through 23, the superior weaponry of the Philistines. There were no blacksmiths in Israel during this time. The Israelites usually went to the Philistines to get their plowshares, axes, and shickle sharpened. Therefore, Saul's army had a very limited number of weapons. The application, what was so bad about Saul offering the sacrifice? From his point of view, didn't he have a good reason for doing it? In part, it was that he, as king, felt he could step into a role God hadn't assigned him. God permitted Saul to become king, but Saul didn't have the authority to overrule God's religious system. And say right, just insert right here. There's a lot of pastors. I have some I've done personally, uh, all throughout my life. Okay, that <clears throat> change God's religious system to suit their needs. They don't repent. I, I, I have prayed for mercy for their soul. Saul was to be in submission to God's system. He forgot his place. 
we, we need to be careful we don't feel at liberty to step into roles. God hasn't, reass hasn't assigned us. Sometimes you see churches appointing people to positions God hasn't authorized them to fill. Those churches may feel they have good reasons for appointing those people, but they're making the same mistake as all. For instance, a pastor, and, and my pastor at my old church, he even said this, has be the husband of one wife. Not because they feel, uh, what's the word? They feel like they're, they're uh, what's the word? what is that word? Because I feel like I have enough knowledge, you know, because I've been to school and I've got my master's in uh, religious theology and dirt, 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 you know? Just because you feel like you are, whatever the word is, it will not come to me. Mm -mm. No, God strictly says, period. The first thing he says, he must be the husband of one wife. End of story. If you can't get past that first, you just don't even worry about the rest of it. So even if there is a man that's an excellent theologian and knows the Bible back and forth, you know, backwards and forwards, and, and has studied apologetics and has a doctorate in everything you could have, if he's been married to more than one woman, he could not fill the role as a pastor. Because if you just say, oh, well, that first marriage was a mistake, or the first two marriages were a mistake, or whatever, you know, that, that would be appointing people to positions God hasn't authorized them to fill. And those churches may feel they have good reasons for appointing those people, but they're making the same mistake as Saul. Bottom line, that's not me or the person that wrote this attacking anybody. This is God's word. If you want to get mad at anyone, get mad at God. It's his law. They're forgetting their place. They're forgetting they are to be in submission to God's system. That was 13. Outline. And, uh, actually, I could. Oh, 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 I forgot I could just switch. If you don't get off of my chair, Pat. Um, so I'm going to try to just switch from. Switch windows. Who was that? Up there. Uh, in hopes that uh, on the wrong screen, that it won't end on me again. I'm going to wonder if there's something in this reading that, with everything going on over in Israel, that that maybe someone's like, oh no, if they read this out loud. Some people may realize, and, you know, you know, that Israel has a right to defend their land. Come on, you fit. There we go. Okay, so in 1 Samuel 13, Saul's unlawful sacrifice. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose for himself 3,000 men of Israel. 2,000 were with Saul and Michmash, and in the mountains of Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan and Gibeah of Benjamin. The rest of the people he sent away, every man to his tent. And Jonathan attacked the garrison of the Philistines, pardon me, that was in Geba, and the Philistines heard of it. Then Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. Now all Israel heard it, said that Saul had attacked the garrison of the, of the Philistines, and that Israel had also become an abomination to the Philistines. And the people were called together to Saul at Gilgal. Then the Philistines gathered together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and encamped in Michmash to the east of beth -Avon. When the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, for the people were distressed, then the people hid in caves, in thickets, in rocks, in holes, and in pits. And some of the Hebrews crossed over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was still in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. Then he waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, Bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened as soon as he had finished. 
presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might greet him and Samuel said what have you done Saul said when I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash then I said the Philistines would now come down on me at Gilgal and I have not made supplication to the Lord therefore I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering and Samuel said to Saul you had done you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people. Because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Oh, yeah be commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you then Samuel arose and went up from Gilgal to Gibeah of Benjamin and Saul numbered the people present with him about 600 men no weapons for the army Saul Jonathan his son and the people present with them remained in Gibeah of Benjamin but the Philistines encamped in Michmash then raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies one company turned onto the road of Ophrah to the land of Shuol, another company turned on the road to Beth Haran, and another company turned to the road of the border that overlooks the valley of Zeboim toward the wilderness. Now there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make swords or spears. But all the Israelites would go down, leave it open, to the Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattock, his axe, and his sickle. And the charge for sharpening was a pin for the plowshares, the mattocks, the forks, and the axes, and to set the points of the goats. So it came about on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan. But they were found with Saul and Jonathan his son. So Jonathan and Saul were the only two that actually had spears. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the pass of Michmash. Okay, hold on for a minute for a second. Please don't start flashing. Picture. There we go. All right. I don't know where my side thing is. Oh. All right, here we go. Okay, 1 Samuel 14. So the win is Israel's first king, Saul, who was appointed in approximately 1050 BC. And these events took place several years after Saul was appointed where the Israelites fought with the retreating Philistine army from Michmash to Ej, I don't know how to say that word, Ejelon, Ejelon, I believe that's, that was it, it almost sounds like that's how Pastor Christian pronounced it, I think so. Okay, characters, we know Saul and Jonathan, uh, then we have Jonathan's armor bearer, God used him to win a great victory over the Philistines, and then the Philistines, the longtime enemies of Israel. Okay, so in the outline, Jonathan and his armor bearer defeat the Philistines, verses 1 through 23. Uh, oh, I thought I messed up. Yeah, 14, chapter 14, 1 through 23. In 1 Samuel 13, the Philistines brought a large army to Michmash to fight against Israel. Saul and his 600 men were in a cave near Gibeah. Rather than stay in the cave with his father, Jonathan took his armor bearer and approached the Philistine garrison. Jonathan wanted to fight the Philistines and he knew God could help him. He told his armor bearer, it may be that the Lord will work for us for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. Jonathan decided that if the Philistines called to him and told him to come up to the garrison that would be his sign that the Lord was with him and wanted him to attack. If the Philistine watchman told him to remain where he was, he would refrain from attacking. Let me just make sure I still have audio. Yeah, okay. Um, right here. As the two warriors approached the garrison, 
they were spotted by the Philistine soldiers who told them to come up to the garrison, concluding that God was on their side. Jonathan and his armor bearer attacked. They struck down 20 men and threw the Philistine camp into a panic. God fought alongside Jonathan and sent an earthquake. God caused the Philistines to start fighting one another. When Saul's camp realized what was happening, they hurried to join the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the Philistines retreated. Saul's vow, verses 24 through 46. As the Israelites were chasing the retreating Philistines, Saul put his men under an oath. He told his men they were not allowed to eat any food until the evening because they needed to stay focused on defeating the Philistines. Jonathan was not aware of the oath, and he ate some honey in the forest. When he was later informed about the oath, he questioned his father's reasoning, because the men had become so faint they weren't able to win a decisive victory. By the time the men were allowed to eat, they were so hungry they started killing animals and eating the meat without properly bleeding it, which was forbidden in God's law. Saul later discovered Jonathan had violated his mandate and he was ready to put his son to death. But the people refused to let Saul kill him because God had worked through him to bring salvation to Israel that day. No. Okay, and then Saul's battles with Israel's enemies, verses 47 through 52. God gave Saul victory over all of Israel's enemies. He fought with the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Amalekites, Philistines, and the kings of Zobah. The Israelites experienced hard fighting. Hold on. I'm trying to get my ear to quit being plugged up. Oh, oh so t I've got to go to an ENT. You know how long I've been complaining about my left ear? It's still doing the same thing. And I've been taking an uh, uh, allergy pill, a prescribed allergy pill since January. Six months later, it has not improved. It's not allergy. I'm sorry. I, I am sad to tell that doctor. Anyway, uh, the Israelites experienced hard fighting with the Philistines during the whole of Saul's reign. Verses 49 through 50 list the names of Saul's sons and daughters. Oh, I hope I can pronounce them. Uh, his sons were Jonathan, Ishvi, and Malkish, Malkishua, Malkishua, something like that. His daughters were Merib and Michael. Michelle, Michelle, I guess. Okay, that's that. The outline. I keep forgetting if you just oh, stop. Just switch. Mm, maybe I should just close it without saying it because I'm done with it. And that's less things open too. That's it. Okay, first thing out 14, Jonathan defeats the Philistines. My, uh, I think as for you, yeah, come here, over here, come over here. I'm not ready for you yet, but thanks for playing. Now, it happened one day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he did not tell his father. And Saul was sitting in the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migran. Migran, Migran, whatever. The people who were with him were about 600 men. Ahijah, the son of Ahidab, Ichabod's brother, the son of uh, Phinehas, who remembered, hey, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, was wearing an ephod. But the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. Between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Bozes and the name of the other Sina. The front of the one the front the front of one faced northward opposite Michmash and the other southward opposite Gibeah. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised, it may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. So his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you, according to your heart. Then Jonathan said, Very well, let us cross over to these men, and we will show ourselves to them. If they say thus to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up to them. 
but if they say thus, come up to us, then we will go. For the Lord has delivered them in our hand, and this will be a sign to us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, Look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us, and we will show you something. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan, and as he came after him, his armor bearer killed them. That first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was around twenty men within about half an acre of land. And there was trembling in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. And the garrison and the raiders also trembled, and the earth quaked, so that it was a very great trembling. Now the watchmen of Saul and Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and there was the multitude melting away, and there went here and there. And then Saul said to the people who were with them, Now call the roll and see who has gone from us. And when they had called the roll, surprisingly, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. And Saul said to Ahijah, Bring the ark of God here. For at that time the ark of God was with the children of Israel. Now it happened while Saul talked to the priest that the noise which was in the camp of the Philistines continued to increase. So Saul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all the people who were with him assembled. And they went to the battle, and indeed every man's sword was against his neighbor, and there was very great confusion. Moreover, the Hebrews who were with the Philistines before that time, who went up with them into the camp from the surrounding country, they also joined the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, all the men of Israel who had hidden in the mountains of Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, they also followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle shifted to beth Avon. Saul's rash oath. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had placed the people under oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats any food until evening, before I have taken vengeance on my enemies. So none of the people tasted food. Now all the people of the land came to a forest, and there was honey on the ground. And when the people had come into the woods, there was the honey dripping, but no one put his hand to his mouth for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard his father's charge, the people, with the oath. Therefore he stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put its hand to his mouth, and his countenance brightened. Then one of the people said, Your father strictly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats food this day. And the people were faint. But Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. Look now, how my countenance has brightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much better if the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies which they found. For now would there not have been a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? Now they had driven back the Philistines that day from Michmash to Aijalon. So the people were very faint, and the people rushed on the spoil and took sheep, oxen, and calves and slaughtered them on the ground, and the people ate them with the blood. Then they told Saul, saying, Look, the people are singing against the Lord by eating with the blood. So he said, You have dealt treacherously. Roll a large stone to me this day. Then Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people and say to them, Bring me here every man's ox and every man's sheep. Slaughter them here and eat, and do not sin against the Lord by eating with the blood. So every one of the people brought his ox with him that night, and slaughtered it there. And then Saul built an altar to the Lord. This was the first altar that he built to the Lord. Now Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and plunder them until the morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. Then the priest said, Let us draw near to God here. So Saul Ask counsel of God, shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him that day. And Saul said, Come over here, all you chiefs of the people, and know and see what this sin was today. For as the Lord lives, who saves Israel, though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But not a man among all the people answered him. Then he said to all Israel, You be on one side, and my son Jonathan and I will be on the other side. And the people said to Saul, Do what seems good to you. Therefore Saul said to the Lord God of Israel, 
give a perfect lot. So Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between my son Jonathan and me. So Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what you have done. And Jonathan told him and said, I only tasted a little honey with the end of my rod that was in my hand, so now I must die? Saul answered, God do so, and more also, for you shall surely die, Jonathan. But the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who has accomplished this great deliverance in Israel? Certainly not. As, uh, as the Lord lives, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground, for he has worked with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, and he did not die. Then Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. Saul's Continuing Wars So Saul established his sovereignty over Israel, and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, against the people of Ammon, against Edom, against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he harassed them. And he gathered an army and attacked the Amalekites and delivered Israel from the hands of those who plundered them. The sons of Saul were Jonathan, Jeshuai, and Malkishua. Ma I don't know how to say that. And the names of his two daughters were these. The name of the firstborn, Merib, and the name of the younger, Michal. The name of Saul's wife was Ahino, Ahino I don't know how to say that, and the daughter of Ahim. I, I can't pronounce these, and I did not look these up ahead. I apologize. And the name of the commander of his army was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. Now there was fierce war with the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw that any strong man or any valiant man, he took him for himself. Okay, so that's the end of 14. Okay, so usually I split these into two. Oh, right. I know what that is. Go away. That's it. I usually split these into two videos, which I'm going to do because this one's already like at 27 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and end this one, and then I'll do loop 10. A video by itself because even that can be long by itself because he does such a thorough coverage of you know the the, the what do you it's, the, it's this not the five minute bible study it's it's the full coverage of the chapter so he breaks it down by verse by verse so anyways shalom shalom and i will return in just a few minutes i have to go and debone some chicken and make some rice and and broth so i can feed my spoiled babies and then i'll be back to do Luke 10 verses 1 through 24. Love you and Jesus loves you and I'll be back.